Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at factors and multiples. So first of all we're going to look at factors. Uh, so what is a factor? Well a factor is when you have numbers that divide into another number exactly, so there's no remainder. So let's have a look at an example. I want to know all the factors of 12. Now the best way to tackle this is to think about what uh, two numbers multiply to get to 12. So to do it logically, start off with 1. 1 times what gets us 12? Well, of course, it's going to be 12. And that tends to be the pair that people forget. They always forget to go for the most obvious one, which is 1 times itself. OK, so 1 is a factor and 12 is a factor. Next number to try is 2. So 2 times what is 12? Well, of course, it's 6, because we just half it. So 2 is a factor, and 6 is a factor. Next one to test would be 3. Well, 3 times what is 12? Well, of course, that's 4. OK? Now, I don't have to carry on going anymore, because once I've done 1, 2, and 3, I look over on this side, and then obviously I've got the next one, which is 4. And I already know that 4 is a factor. So as soon as you start and go back on yourself, obviously you can stop. You don't have to test any more numbers, which is why this method is definitely the best way to go about it. So the factors of 12, you can write it out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Let's have a go at 32. Exactly the same strategy. Start off with your 1 times itself, so 1 times 32. So 1 is a factor and 32 is a factor. So test 2, or 2 times 16. Now 3, and this is interesting. You know your 3 times table. Obviously you know that 10 3s are 30, so 11 3s are 33. So 3 doesn't go into it. And I'll talk about some other methods that you can test in a minute. But just from times tables, you should be able to know that 3 is not a factor. Next one to test is 4, and again, using your times tables, 4 times 8 is 32, so that one's fine. 4 and 8 are both factors. Next one to test would be 5. Well, it doesn't end in a, a 0 or a 5, so 5 definitely doesn't go in there. It's not in the 5 times table. Likewise with 6, 32 isn't in the 6 times table, and neither is 7. And again, then I hit 8, so I'm going back on myself so I can stop. So the factors we 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. So finding the factors of small numbers is relatively easy if you know and you're really good at your times tables. Uh, but I'm going to have a look at this one here in a minute, 72, using some of these tricks to help you when the numbers are a bit bigger and you might miss a few. But before I do that, I want to have a look at this here, the HCF, the highest common factor of 12 and 32. So what does that mean? Well, common factor just means which factors are common to both 12 and 32. So let's have a look. The common factors are obviously going to be 1 and 1. That's common. 2 is in both, so that's common. And 4 is in both, so that's common. And other than that, there's nothing else that's common. So of course, the highest common factor is just which one of those factors that is common, which one is the highest, which of course would be 4. So again, finding the highest common factor is easy when you've got small numbers because there's not that many factors. If you're trying to find the highest common factor of some big numbers, definitely check out my video on how to do it using a Venn diagram because it's so much easier with uh, using that than with uh, for, for big numbers as opposed to this example, which is small numbers. But just again, that's how you can do it if it's a nice easy one. Okay, so this one here, 72, slightly bigger number, and there's going to be more factors. We have to be careful when doing this. So I've got a few tricks to help us, which is on uh, the right-hand side here. But always we start off with the obvious ones, 1 times 72, okay, because that's going to be obvious. Next thing to test is 2. Does 2 go into it? So the little test that you can do to see if 2 is a factor is you can half it, and if you get a whole number... Yes, it is. 2 will definitely be a factor. Or if it ends in a 2, 4, 6, 8, or a 0, then 2 will also be a factor. So in other words, if it's even. This number here is even, so yep, 2 is definitely a factor. So 2 times what? Well, if I half it, I get 36. So 36 is a factor. Next number to test is 3. Now, this is the little check that you can do. If you add the digits 
And if the once you've added them, if that number is in the three times table, then yes, three is a factor. So I've got an example here. Uh, two add three is five, add six is 11, add eight is 19. 19 is not in the three times table, so three is not a factor of that number. However, if I add these ones up, so two add three is five, uh, add six is 11, uh, add eight is 19, add two is 21. 21 is in the three times table, so three would be a factor uh, in this particular number here. So that's a little trick that you can do, and by all means test it on a calculator, but that's a little trick you can do to see if three is a factor. So let's apply that to here. 7 add 2 is 9. 9 is in the 3 times table, so 3 will definitely be a factor. 3 times what? So you can do a bus stop if you wish, or you can just, uh, if you know it, that's cool. Uh, so 3 times 24. Next number to test is uh, if 4 is a factor. So to test that, you just half it and half it again. Well, if I half 72, I get 36. I know that already from this one here. So if I half it again, I get 18. So I get a nice whole number. So yet yeah, four is gonna be a factor as well. So four times 18 gets me 72. We've already briefly mentioned it about five. To test the number, uh, it's to, sorry, to test if five is a factor, does it end in a five or a zero? Well, that ends in a two. So no, five isn't gonna be a factor. To test if six is a factor, is the number even? If it is, do the three test, just back here. So this number here I've done as an example, it's even because it ends in, in a four. And if you add all these up, so we've got four, uh, add five is nine, add six is 15, add two is 17, uh, add three is 20, add four is 24. So 24 is in the three times table and that number is even. So six will be a factor of that number there. Let's do the same trick here. It's an even number because it ends in a two. If I add them together, just like with the three, I get nine. Three is in the nine times table, so six will definitely be a factor of 72. Six times what? That one is a times table you should know. Six times 12. Seven, unfortunately there's no test for seven. You've just got to know your seven times table, but I know that 10 sevens are 70, so I know that seven definitely isn't gonna be in 72. There's no real trick for that, unfortunately. For test if eight is a factor, all you do is half it, half it, and half it again. Well, if I half it, I get 36. If I half it again, I get 18. If I half it again, I get nine. So nine, it, it, sorry, eight is definitely gonna be a factor, and it's eight times nine. Now, I can stop because I'm now gonna go back on myself. I've done all the way to eight, now I'm on nine, I'm going back on myself. So I can stop, but just as a quick one here, you can test if nine is a factor for bigger numbers. If you add the numbers all up, and if it's in the nine times table, yes, nine will be a factor. So for example, four add five is nine, add eight is 17, add two is 19, add three is 22, add five is 27. 27 is in the nine times table, so nine would be a factor of that number. Exactly the same thing here. If we wanted to test it, we already know it is, but just test it. Seven add two is nine. Of course, nine is in the nine times table. So there we go. And that should be the logical approach approach that you go, uh, you take. Test one, test two, test three, test four, test five, and so on and so forth um, to find the factors of a number. And I say some of these tricks here might just speed that process, process up. So that's factors and highest common factor. Next thing to have a look at is multiples. Now, multiples are much easier. Multiples are just numbers in the times table. So if I go for the first five, obviously four is the first uh, multiple of four. Then it's just the times table. So eight, 12, 16, 20, and so on. Okay, it's just numbers in that times table. So, uh, so multiples of seven, again, it's just a seven times table. So seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, and so on. And even big numbers like 22, exactly the same thing. So you've got 44, uh, 66, 88, and uh, 110, okay? And again, you can keep going, okay? So multiples are just numbers in the times table. So again, what you might have 
is what's called the LCM, the lowest common multiple. So again, we're looking for common multiples, so common multiples in both the five and the six times table, and then we want the lowest one. No such thing as the highest one, because it, the times tables go on forever and ever and ever, and obviously you can't pick the highest one, but we can pick the lowest one. And for small numbers like this, quick way of doing it is just to write out the five times table or the multiples of five, which I'm just going to do now. So I'm quickly, oops, sorry, missed one. 20, 25, and 30. And the six times table, 6, 12, 18, 24, and 30. So as you can see, 30 is the first number that appears in both. So 30 would be the lowest common multiple, or LCM, of 5 and 6. So for low numbers, it's not too bad. You can quickly do it like that. Uh, and if you've got three numbers, what's the lowest common multiple of 4, 5, and 12? So I don't really want to be writing down the 4 times table, the 5 times table, and the 12 times table. So pick the highest one, which is 12, and write out the multiples of the highest one. So 12... 24, 36, uh, 48, um, 60, uh, 72, and so on and so forth. And then check it. Obviously, this is the 12 times table, so 12 is the multiple, that's fine. Is 5 in any of these numbers? Remember, the little check we had before, if a number ends in 0 or 5, then yes, it is. So no, 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 yes, 5 or sorry, I should say 60, is a multiple of 5. 60 is in the 5 times table. Is it also in the 4 times table? Well, let's check it. If I half it, I get 30. If I half it again, I get 15. So yes. So that's probably the quick way of doing it to save you writing it all out. Of course you can. You can write out the 4 times table, the 5 times table, and the 12 times table. That's probably the quickest way of doing it. Pick the, the uh, largest number uh, and work backwards like that. Check if that one is. Check if that one is. Okay, so that's how to do the lowest common multiple and highest common factor of relatively small numbers. But as I said, for big numbers, make sure you check out the video on how to do the highest common factor and lowest common multiple using a Venn diagram um, and also uses product to prime factors. Both videos are available on the channel, uh, so give them a look. Hopefully that helps, guys. Thanks for watching.